Yo, what is good, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is your boy King, guys. We're back again today. This is gonna be a banger of a video, guys. Let's not waste any time, guys. If white men were 100 percent honest, this is about to get very racist very quickly. <laughs> nah, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. So um, yeah, let's jump right into this, guys. I'm gonna be a fly on the wall. Obviously, I'm not white, we can see that. Um, but I'm gonna be a fly on the wall and just uh, you know, give my take and what they're saying, you know. Because this is brutal honesty. These guys are anonymous, they get to say it how it is and how they feel deep inside. And I'm guessing a few of them are gonna probably say they feel marginalized right now because the cis white man is the enemy of the left right now they are the enemy of the left so hey let's see what i'm going let's see what they say here what what they what they stir up it's gonna be mad we brought together seven strangers protected their identities and created a space for them to be completely honest Jeez. what will be revealed when they take the mask off this is gonna be mad everyone is racist including me. <laughs> I, I'm not, like, nobody wants to think of themselves as racist and I don't think that I'm racist. I think people are not racist, but people are race loyal. I think, um, especially a lot of people, um, when they get marginalized, they become very race loyal very quickly. So, um, let's hear what they say because if you imagine if you if you remember black people back in the you know civil rights movement they were like like that the black community was together but now you know they've been assimilated into the environment the, the community this is community is not as strong as it once was you know as they were church going wearing suits now they're sagging their pants and it's a, it's a whole different system now it's a whole different system now so yeah man let's let's see what they have to say racist in the way that I think we think about racism, but I think I took the question as these like inherent biases that Facts. everybody has. Exactly. And I think most of the time, most people are not aware of this. It's mm -hmm. weird. I think there's like this new generational divide of like, you are a racist or you said a racist thing. And I don't know where the line is. Mm -hmm. You might say something a little racist or, or something you don't see as racist. Someone calls you out and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, apologize. And if you argue that point, against them, then I would say you're a racist. But if you understand, you come to understanding, you learn, everyone would be able, should be able to forgive that person and, and be like, no, no, you were just, you made a mistake. People make mm -hmm. mistakes. I and that's the, that's, that's the importance of educating people and not bashing people. And this, this whole thing of canceling people for one thing they said, bro, it's ridiculous. Like if people are willing to change and willing to learn, if they're not willing to learn and change, then fair enough, cancel them. It is what it is. But if people are willing to change and they, they take back their actions, um, and they're genuine about it, you know, forgiveness should, should, should come through, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it, you can't build a society on stoning people. This is literally going backwards instead of going forwards. If we're trying to be more progressive, we should be looking to teach and inform people instead of whenever someone does something wrong, it's like, oh, cancel them, cancel them, cancel them. Bro, it's like, it's literally like stoning people back in the day or outcasting them from society. You know, they become a pariah. Like, it, it's, it's crazy. And the fact that the internet is forever, and you can't get forgiven? Oh Lord, it's all over, it's all over. I don't know, I feel like it's a binary now. Yeah. So I think yeah. a really important thing that kind of, is tough with cancel culture right now is that road to redemption. Exactly. So after you've said something wrong, you know, how do you make yourself right again in the public sphere? At least personally, I feel like I don't see that a lot with cancel culture is if someone makes amends, there's now an acceptance like, hey, you did something wrong, but you're okay now, or at least better. I think social media kind of incentivizes against redemption. And I, I feel like it, it's like, it's just outrage. And I do. People want to ride this, this, this mound of being amazing. And let's say someone who is relatively a nobody gets fame and, and fortune. And the few people who are jealous will start to dig and dig until they find a comment when that person was you know, 10 years old and post some ridiculous things saying, look, you see, you see, there's ingrained racism in this person, you better watch out. And bro, it's just, it's just crazy. It's like people cannot be happy for other people. And in a sense, capitalism incentivizes the people at the bottom who are bitter about the fact that they don't have the drive and will to get to the top to burn the people at the top at any opportunity they get. It's really fucking sad, man. I think people do like the, the rush of lights. anger. I, I don't think people really believe in redemption anymore. I... They should. 
We kind of, I guess, just kind of disagree with the idea of racism as a binary. It kind of goes back to that like really old meme where like Skipper says like, we did it Mrs. Obama, racism is over. The idea of a redemption is just like, all right, they've fixed their racism in the sense that like, I think the redemption that our society is calling for is impossible. It's almost like you need to like write a check every time you make a racism and like that will absolve you of your thing where I think like what we should be doing is like the idea of growth mm -hmm. towards a better understanding. Mm -hmm. I have struggled with my sexuality. Oh shit. Agree, disagree, agree, disagree, agree, disagree. Yeah. <laughs> it's so spicy. Why? Why is the agree red? I don't understand. Disagree should be red. They're really fucking up with the color scheme here. It makes no sense, but it is what it is. Um But yeah, no, it's it's actually this is a valid question. People don't spend enough time asking themselves this question. Or they probably know what they feel inside, but they don't want to articulate it or bring it up forth uh, into reality because then it just solidifies, you know, everything. And then they have to deal with a whole bunch of stress. More stress than they already deal with in this new other facet in terms of sexuality. So most people just keep it bottled up. I'm like, you know, fuck it. I'm just going to live my life, you know, on the sly. It is what it is. I, I felt an attraction to men really young. And... I just, but I didn't connect to gay culture at all. And I was like, I'm either straight or gay. It can't be any, it can't be another one. So I, I very consciously put myself in the closet and uh, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't feel confidence to like be my own person, you know, obviously in high school. Be bad, and yeah. slowly but surely I, you know, I started to come out to more people and talk about my experience and, and stuff, but people come out of the closet. That's one thing. That's that's the second step. The first step is like really kind of like acknowledging it mm. and like loving mm -hmm. yourself. And that was the hardest part. Maza. I'm pretty good now. Uh, I'm, I'm happy, happy and bye. <laughs> now, very comfortable with my Destiny sexuality. Destiny strikes back. And, you know, I know it's a spectrum, but I, I think I'm the most part straight. I struggled with depression for a long time and i think one of the side effects of that for me was I, I fell into an eating disorder and i uh got really skinny and because i was struggling with an eating disorder it made me for some reason question my sexuality and i understand how messed up that is now i started to ask myself why did you associate that one with the other and um I think it was because That's it's just not largely talked about with straight men that uh, people, we can still struggle with mental health and eating disorders. I have a very core memory, somebody might say, of um, me walking in uh, to my house after the first day of first grade and I'm just like, hey mom, I think I have a crush on my friend. And uh, my mom kind of laughed and she's like, oh, boys don't have crushes on boys. And I was like, cool, got it, awesome. Uh, <laughs> my guy took the message like, Cool, cool, cool. I'm around with it. Cool, cool. Roger that. Roger that. Uh, the doors closed on this uh, situation. Boom. My mind back in the closet. Put that in the back Casually. of my mind. And I'm still working with like the idea that if I what ever crush it? on a man, that that's not inherently disgusting. Because what's more disgusting than a man wanting you? Or like you said, like connecting to the gay community, unless you fit like it seems the tiniest of boxes, is really hard. And even now, like I went out last night and I had somebody that I kind of like caught my eye but I had no idea how to approach that it's like everybody else got like a manual and like 17 easy steps to not have social anxiety when in the club <laughs> and I, was like, I guess I was sick that day I didn't get that class I didn't sign up for it on uh LinkedIn just <laughs> sorry I'm using humor to cover it no, like... <laughs> <laughs> my guy is struggling he's struggling but us that's a big move man to, to admit that on a platform like Jubilee, bro, obviously you're covered, but still, man, because the people after this have to see each other and, you know, interact with each other. So at least they know who they are, unless it's completely kept, like, secret from everyone, you know, including themselves, because obviously they did it like this, where it's blacked out and they can't see each other, just a silhouette. So this is this is mad interesting. This is an amazing concept. Um, people can really be honest and really voice their opinions. <laughs> I went up to a guy and said, you're so handsome. And I was like, oh, my God, that sounds like I'm an old woman you know they're like you're so handsome yeah. it's one of those things where it's like oh obviously don't say that but it's like okay but then what do you say yeah it's yeah. like do i not think yeah it's a mother yeah. like talking to girls alone is difficult but imagine being a, a guy who's been socialized to talk to women and then you, the and then you try to go the opposite way bro that shit is wild <laughs>
Have you ever been confused by consent before? Ooh, it's gonna be a tough one. I, for me personally, no, because I'm very slow. I'm very slow and like uh, almost I pace myself. Like I, I let the other person kind of give me all the signals before I make any movements, uh, be it kissing or you know escalating in any way, shape, or form. I and I have to understand that this person really wants it. Then I am able to proceed because. Ain't nobody trying to catch nine up over here, man. Especially a black fella. Bro, no chance. No way, Jose. No. So we take it extra, extra, extra careful. Are you okay? Are you sure? Do you want to do, 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 you know what I mean? Or make sure there's enthusiastic um, consent there. So eh. you have to be sure these days. You have to be sure. You can't be doing shit with it nearly. And again, I always make sure I vet the people I get with because I'm not just going to sleep with no randoms, man. That's how you get in these situations, man. I make sure that i i know the people to a good enough degree to understand you know who they are as an individual and you know their, their mental leanings where they have you know some type of you know issues or they're, they're okay because you don't know who's an antidepressant these days and you don't want to be catching any of those people man that's mad there have been instances where you know in terms of friends relationships whatever i can go too far because i misinterpreted consent and just because people seem comfortable with something you kind of go along with it yeah i think the reason i said yes was just thinking very specifically about a situation you know situations where both of us have been really drunk or something like that where it's like it's not one person sober and the other person is drunk and the drunk person is saying yes but if you're both drunk and both consenting and into it in the moment and then the next day, like I've had like a, neither of us really consented. Is anybody in the wrong here? You know, and so that's kind of what I thought of. Uh, it was sticky situations, man. Confused sticky about. situations. That's why whenever I was in university, I, or college in America, I ensured that I was sober for the whole experience. Barely drank anything. Nada. Nada ensuring that i am always aware of my situation if someone is drunk no thank you go home no thank you don't want none of it no 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 you have to be militant guys your future is is priceless you have to be on job on job your life is your job consent it's not Take as it much in the moment but after the fact in that scenario jack that, that situation is pretty scary because you interpret it one way and if someone was hurt and you didn't mean to do that, and you didn't take the precautions for that, you're mm -hmm. still at fault. And yeah, that's it's over. I'm not saying that's your situation. Yeah, it's over. Like, that, that's the kind of world we live in where we, we can really get in trouble sometimes, even when we don't mean to hurt, hurt mm -hmm. others, and it sucks. Yeah, I think that's the whole thing about consent, is it's not always just like this guy being like, oh, come on, come on. Like, you know, there's such a finer line. Mm -hmm. it's such, there's so many gray areas that yeah. it's really important to have those conversations. Yeah. And even if you as an individual, as a, as a man, if, you, if you're not really feeling it, make it known that it's not, you know, you're not really feeling it, you know? Like, you, you gotta be always on job, in tune with how you feel, be congruent, with, be congruent with your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. You have to be. Everything has to be in alignment. The minute you start losing that alignment, it starts to look shady and dodgy. Because yeah, there can be so many different scenarios that are still non-consensual, so. Women have more power than me. Ooh, 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 ah, this is a tough one. Um, this is a tough one. Um, it, it depends on circumstances and uh, different situations. Um, there's always situations like you know courts where there might be more favor. Uh, there's yeah, courts might have they might have more favor, but uh, workplace situations. Uh, you might have more favor, but then they might have more, have more favor because other people are more willing to help them because, you know, if they're attractive and whatnot, it, you know, really boosts, you know, the need for other people to try and come and help and assist and da da da, da. So it, it's a mazla. It's, it's a tough one, but I'd say in certain situations, yes. And in certain in other situations, no. It just depends. Yeah, I definitely don't think women have more power. And I think some people might think that just because you're seeing a grow, like growing relative power that you know, some men might not be used to, now that women are kind of getting closer to being equal to some people that might feel like they're getting more power and they might be more powerful. 
Um, and so I can understand why someone might, you know, perceive that as relative, but absolutely I don't agree that like women have more power. I think we're getting closer to equality at this point where it's a work in progress. I don't know. It's like a yes and no mm -hmm. question. Exactly. Uh, I was uh, harassed by a superior uh, who was a woman at a previous job, like repeatedly harassed. I reported it to my boss, who was a white male, and he just laughed it off and said, uh, you know, toughen up, buttercup. When women are harassed, I think if I was a woman and I reported harassment, oh, yeah. especially right now with Me Too and everything, CEO would see a huge red flag, a huge possible controversy. And like, I know there's definitely, you know, ways where that isn't true. But for me, it was just like, we don't, we don't care. You're a man, toughen up. I, I don't give a shit. Like, she's a woman. That is the facts. And that is the facts of the world. It is what it is. Will it change? I don't know. We have to see, wait on that. But yay. She can't harass you. And, what can um, you do? Uh, and it, it just goes to speak to the, because of the, the reason this is, why this always happens, we all understand it's because of the, the physical dominance that, that uh, men in general hold is why, you know, it's always seemed like, you know, toughen up. Like there's no way this person can harass you because you can stop it at any time. You, you, you physically outcompete. But then again, you can't even get, like if you even attempt to like, hey, stop it, like, you know, in, in any type of way, then, that could be flipped on you instantly, bro. Instantly. So again, so it's like a catch 22. You can't, you know, physically stop someone from harassing you. Like if they're putting their hands on you or ever touching you inappropriately, you can't stop that physically because they might, you know, write you up for, oh, you're touching me. Da, 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 da. So it's, it's a maza. It's a maza. It was really hard. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Wait, is he crying? No, 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 no. Uh, and I was really scared and like if I didn't have some, you know, good women in my life and, and um, some good people, um, I wouldn't have taken action. I would have just toughened up and I, I would have let it kill me inside. It shouldn't kill you inside. But again, like if you feel like it's, it's worth fighting for, you fight for it there and then, man. Like this, this is the problem again. This is the problem. Because someone tough will, will stand by his morals and, and understand in the current world we live in, 2023, who say, no, this is some bullshit. If this was the other way around, you give this certain treatment. So I, I accept, I, I would like you to give me the same treatment. If not, I will, you know, log this. I'll take this to HR that you said toughen up and we'll get the ball rolling on something, you know, something serious because you should be taken seriously. And that's how you need to move in today's market if you want that situation to get taken seriously. I was about to break down over it. I'm like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. wait it must have been deep, deep harassment if my mind's about to break down over it, man. Sheesh. You can only imagine what was happening to this man. For him to be, to be breaking down about it like this, bro. Like, man, man almost broke character. Tears was about to roll down his face. It was all over. Sheesh. But luckily, again, he had a strong support, ne support system, support network. And uh, they got him through it. He took action. Sorry, but still, man, you need to. In a sense, you need to, you know, have respect for yourself and stand up for yourself in situations. Someone tells you to toughen up, you're like, no. No. I'm not, it's not about toughening up. It's just about respect and decency, human decency. That's what it's about. Not res it's about re having respect for me as an individual and the fact that I'm not comfortable with the advances this individual is making to me on the things they're doing. I'm not comfortable with it and you as my boss should deal with it. If not, you know, we'll take this uh, to HR and they can deal with it. If you're not, if you're so flippant as to not, you know, take it seriously. Happened. I'm so sorry. Man. Sorry. I've had fantasies. Sheesh. Sheesh. Ooh, disagree. Ooh, they are asking the tough questions, man. White people, are god damn. Okay. Um. So I said yes because, like, I can't think of a specific time, but like, I believe I have at one point. It's more like role-playing under very strict guidelines and with the understanding that my partner will stop if I ever get too uncomfortable. Ooh. Wait, what? Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, that took a turn. I thought they meant if they are going to com commit the crime, not if the crime is going to be committed on them. 
What? Hold on, let me just, I, I, I need to make sure I heard that right. One point, it's more like role-playing under very strict guidelines and with the understanding that my partner will stop if I ever get too uncomfortable. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Look, was Thomas the, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, you know, Thomas, he was the, the guy who came out. It took him a long time to come out as, um, as bi, so he probably has a male partner and he'd want that acted on him. So that's fair enough. Okay, cool. In cool, terms cool, of cool. like, that makes sense. I was, I was losing it for two seconds. I was, I was thinking he was straight for two seconds. I was like, wait, 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 wait. what? Fantasizing about actually doing the very illegal and immoral act? No. But I think, you know, like role playing or even like the fiction you read or even like to a certain extent, as long as it's ethically made, uh, porn, like it's exploring that healthily, I think is valid. And it's something that I think I have done in the past. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I li like I explore it in porn, but like personally, no, like it, it, it freaks me out too much. You know, I do have like this kind of feel of wanting to be dominated by a man, you know, you know, or a woman. That's more in oh, shit, porn yeah. than like in real life. I, I, I feel like I'd be freaked out <laughs> in real life if that happened. Interesting. So in this situation where you're doing this, like with your partner, they used to. These, these guys are honest, honest man. Shit, I give them props for being honest, honest man. Even in a dark room like this, bro. What? This is this is must be. This is a buzzer. Are you the person that is receiving this idea? Of you're saying, am I playing the role of the? Victim. Assailant or the victim? The vic yeah, okay. you, the role I am playing would be that of the assailant. Of the assailant. That. Okay. Oh, okay. So I was wait, wait okay, okay. Because he was making it sound like he was a victim. Okay. And my partner would be the victim due to like social okay. anxiety okay, and okay, okay. like. I thought he was the victim. Just a lot of things that keep me like a more like docile and submissive person. I like exploring a more dominant side via power dynamics in a safe environment, obviously. When you're assaulted, like sexually assaulted, you don't have a choice in the matter, but when you are role-playing it, you can say, you know, like a safe word. And that kind of, you have the control, but when it's robbed from, that control's robbed from you, it, you know, it messes with you. That, I think that's the distinction with the role-play. Yeah. I feel like we kind of have a misunderstanding here. I at least think that it's really insensitive, at least, to be doing these role-plays because you will never be able to feel the these people feel and be, like it kind of it kind of it's off shifting to know that that's something desired mm -hmm. you know i understand that and like like i said it is something like obvious i've never experienced it and so what i my fantasy kind of might come from like a position of privilege and i think that's why i'd like to explore it in a healthy way to figure out like why exactly i feel that way yeah. and i understand like the and even, like as i explained it, it has a right, the like, Muslim, man, like, leave this one jarring alone. and the way you're explaining it, though, like that's why I'm asking you questions because yeah, I can no instantly one. assume that you're a shitty person. But now that I uh, no, he's an assume you're a shitty person, bro. That's ridiculous to assume that. Like again, it's like when when you having relations intercourse with your partner, she's female, and she wants you know to be called dirty words or be degraded a little bit. You know what I mean? Like you know, you slut, you little, da -da -da, you little, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Everyone understands this. Like that doesn't make them a shitty person. So I don't know what this man is talking about. That's just that's just a kink, man. See the way you spoke to me, and you know, you kink shaming. Is he kink shaming? You obviously have some feelings about it that you've thought to yourself over time. So yeah, like I just want to. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. But and I think that the way we handled it is kind of a good way to be communicate with others and understand issues. Yeah, no, like I appreciate the way you ask the questions and stuff like that. Thank so. you. I have Sheesh. been. Lord. But abuse in what sense? That's the question. Like physically abused, sexually abused. Like what? What do they mean by the question? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been. <laughs> I just said yes. I've been going through it. You go through it. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think I've just been abused uh, two two ways. And abused is such a again like means yeah, so many it's a things. Big word, so yeah. I've been abused emotionally in a relationship, mm. but not physically or sexually, but definitely emotionally. And then I've been abused as like an employee. To, to an employer, again, not sexually mm, that's or fair. physically, but just abused their power over me. I, as I, I talked about, you know, I got harassed by an older female employee and uh, working through it, it's always, it's, it's always a process. I don't know. 
Um, my family, they, we've endured emotional, physical abuse from my father, and I'm sure a lot of people can, you know, attest and say that. It's interesting because, I don't know about, I can't speak to the emotional, but in terms of physical, yes. I don't know if I call it abuse, because obviously I come from an African background, so in my, you know, traditionally, the beatings are handed out, you know, in schools, at home, if you're being rowdy in public, someone could whoop your ass. You know what I mean? And your parents would be cool with it. If you're just being disrespectful in public, uh, you know, shaming your family. So for me, I, it's more of a, you know, it's a, le for me, the abuse was not abuse. It was to be taught lessons of life and how to act. And that when you don't act correctly and appropriately, there are consequences and the worst of those could be someone getting very, very violent very, very quickly. And, you know, at least in my lifetime, I felt the pain of, you know, you know, the, the, the God hand, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the, you know, so I can, yeah. So you kind of know how that feels, but uh, I don't know. Maybe in his sense, as we're going to hear him speak, he probably actually got like, it was just from a place of malice. Like, I hate you, you people. It wasn't like, I love you, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do this to teach you a lesson so that you understand that the world is not a nice place and you need to be respectful going into it, understanding that shit could go south at any situation. You need to be on your best, best behavior because me as your parent, I'm, I'm restraining myself, you know, and giving you this certain amount, whether it be 10 belt whips or one slap, I'm just giving you that. But on the outside world, some might give you way worse. So you got to be, you know, on your P's and Q's in ensuring that you are respectful. You know, you conduct yourself with, with great manners and you understand that you always need to de-escalate, not escalate situations. And don't be an idiot. The same things. And he doesn't, he lives in a whole nother country now. So I don't really talk to him. And I need that guidance that, you know, when I'm going from 14 to 18 years old, that's like a really influential time. So it's really hard to have to deal with that on your own. The worst part was when I told him about some of the issues I had because I didn't have him to, because of the way he, you know, hurt me. He kind of just said, yo, that's your fault. Like, you can't blame me for that and put it on me. I think this kind of ties into, I want to bring it in house. Yeah, that's a beast. Like as a white man, I can't really talk about my problems because it's, you're always been taught to suck it up. And I'm sure all of us have been told that multiple times in your life. Mm -hmm. Suck it up. Buttercup I heard over here one, so yeah, for you, I, I remember with your boss telling you that, you know, yeah. that wasn't valid and that's not fair. I don't think just because you're a man or white, you, you can't be abused. I was told that growing up. I think abuse kind of requires a power dynamic and like, even like all of us were white men, there's always somebody above us. There's a richer, whiter man, I guess, <laughs> like, what is exactly the top? I said a richer, whiter man. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the truth. When people when people come at at, at people like, oh, you know, men have all the power, da, 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 patriarchy. It's like, bro, there's a select few people at the top who are actually living the best life. The other guys, the top one percent of men, are actually living the best life. The other guys are slumming it, bro, slumming it. So it it, it makes no sense when people say these things, man. It, it makes absolutely no sense. So yeah, like. Only a, a small percentage of men actually, you know, hold the power and patriarchy. The rest of them are just trying to get by, bruh, and live a decent life. Because there's always somebody, I think, above us to abuse us, and that's just not really talked about. Um, really quickly, I just want to do one thing. There's going to be no talking. It's the last question I have, and you cannot elaborate on your opinion either way, okay. is <laughs> the era of white men is over. <laughs> Uh, that is a yes, sir. Uh, that is a yes. That is a yes, sir. Bruh. Really wanted to elaborate on that. Yeah, that's a good, that's a <laughs> yeah. good one. Oh, duh. Yo, I, I give them props for being brave enough to, to come up on there and you know, give their talking points and say, being 100% honest, man, we need to find those other, the two guys who said, um, it's not over. We need to find you guys because it's over. <laughs> no, man, no, no, no. But yeah, no, honestly, man, that was, that was a brave thing to do, man. Come up here and, 
and give your honest opinion even though it was obviously under the guise of anonymity but still it's a very very hard thing to do to actually express oneself completely and honestly and speak truthfully about your experiences and things you've gone through in life it's a tough one man props to the guys man uh guys if you like the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will catch you guys on the next one the next video is going to be reacting to the the male um feminists versus the male anti-feminists uh we're gonna check that one out um and yeah guys it's gonna be real subscribe like comment and i'll catch you on the next one guys and as i always say spread love not warcraft i will catch you guys on the next one peace